This is Inspired Wellness with Jessica, your new go-to podcast for mind, body, and emotional wellness. Tune in to hear real, raw conversations about stress, anxiety, and holistic self-care. I am your podcast host. My name is Jessica. I am from Inspired Life Collective. I'm an advanced EFT practitioner, meditation therapist, and holistic life coach, and I am on a mission to educate you on how to release stress from your body and dare I say, even prevent it and inspire you to live life with a calm body, a clear mind and thriving emotionally. If you are ready to support your long-term health and wellness, then let's jump straight into the episode. Welcome to this episode of Inspired Wellness with Jessica. Today, guys, I have a really special treat for you. Here to talk to us about how our clutter affects our mind and our mood is Courtney Rao from The Styled Pantry. Courtney is obsessed with helping busy mums learn how to declutter and organize their homes through her four-week online course, Overwhelmed to Organized. Courtney knows how it can feel to be overwhelmed, stressed, and like you're drowning in too much stuff. And she loves to teach women how to declutter so that they can start to feel calmer, happier, and organized in their home. Courtney, welcome. Thank you, Jess. It's so good to be here. Thanks for having me on. Really good to have you here. Really, really good. This is a topic that I love to talk about. And I think that a lot of women are going to be able to relate to to this conversation. So Courtney, Courtney is a friend of mine and we are in a mastermind together. We just spent last week attending a retreat virtually, which was amazing. How are you feeling after last week? I am feeling good. I was just saying earlier, I was a bit tired after the big full-on two days but it was so inspiring so many downloads um so so motivating and beautiful to get to know everyone that much more um I had the best time I loved it hopefully we'll both be there in person later in the year that's right Courtney and I both attended virtually for our personal reasons and everybody else is all there in person so (laughs) We still, but, you know, we still had an experience or I feel like there was still an experience, you know, where we did have the opportunity to connect with everybody and and experience most things as everybody there did. It was, it was really great. Um, What I love about those sorts of um, situations or those sorts of things is that, you know, you're with people surrounded by people who are like-minded and, doing the same crazy things that you're doing, like trying to run a business from home with children. <laughs> exactly. It's, um, yeah, just that community. And like you said, like-minded women, we're all, I think we are, we're all mums and yeah, got kids at home or kids at school or even grown up kids, but we're all similar in that way. And yeah, it's so nice just to have other women to bounce ideas off, to support each other. And yeah, it's just such a beautiful group. We're really lucky, I think. I, I feel exactly the same way. And I feel very lucky to have met you as well. So me too, Jess. You want to tell me a little bit or tell people listening a little bit about how you got started with the style pantry? Yeah, I'd love to. So a couple of years ago, it was almost two years ago because it was during that first lockdown. Um, and I decided I was fed up with my pantry. I think I was buying more in bulk, like a lot of people were, we didn't know, you know, what was happening. So there was more things in my pantry, but I was getting so frustrated with, you know, not being able to find things, buying things that I already had, you know, so wasting money, um, and just that general clutteredness. And I just, you know, it was getting too much. So, you know, spending lots of time on Instagram as probably a lot of us were at the time. (laughs) I was looking, you know, looking at certain hashtags like pantry inspo and all that thing. It seemed like a bit of a thing. Lots of people were making over their pantry. So that's what I did. I um, made over my pantry, got it all organized, got beautiful jars with bamboo lids and then some great 
plastic ones as well, which are obviously more kid friendly. Um, and it made such a difference. It not only looked so much better, um, but it felt, it made me feel so much better. Um, I could find what I was looking for. It made writing the shopping list that much easier because, you know, you can basically just look and see everything, what I needed. Um, so yeah, that's where I started. So I started with my pantry and then I found I was motivated to move on and do more. So um, got the rest of my kitchen done and then that flowed on to the rest of the house. So that's what I kind of always start with. I encourage everyone to start start small, start with your pantry or even just a drawer in your kitchen or a cupboard in your kitchen. Just don't try and declutter and organise the whole home, you know, in, in a weekend. It's just, it's kind of unrealistic and you're probably be finishing you know be over it and overwhelmed with the actual decluttering that you give up you know yeah so definitely starting small and um and you know seeing those little changes and it grows into something so much bigger and did I see that you do labels as well do you still I, do that? I do that's that's actually how what the business started started by making the pantry and home um but I found that when I was sharing things about organizing as well my um my community I didn't I don't like saying followers my community um were those kinds of women who wanted to take it a step further as well like if you're you know ordering labels for your pantry then you're probably ready for that next step of organization or that's what you're interested in or that's what you're going for so that's when I started doing and sharing more of the decluttering and organization side as well so yeah wow. the business has kind of developed over the last couple of years but um I'm loving it it's really lots of fun do you know there is such thing as pantry envy and I'm sure it probably only became a thing <laughs> after our lockdowns I'm sure Absolutely. but there really truly is I too am somebody who went and you know put everything in containers and sorted out my pantry but it's not pretty it's not you know it's I think I get really overwhelmed at the thought of organizing something at first it seems like a brilliant idea and then I start to overthink it. So I was like, oh, but does this go with this or should this go with this? And so just that process of decluttering in itself can become quite overwhelming. And then suddenly you fold everything out and you're sitting in this big mess. And if you're not sure how to take that next step, um, no matter you know whether you're starting with your pantry or anything, if you're not sure how to take that next step, then, you know, you kind of, feel like oh god what have I just done <laughs> yes I know what you mean it, it definitely always has that messy in the middle part where you're like exactly what you said what have I done what have I started and then sometimes you end up just throwing everything back in and you know and giving up and I do want to say though just going back to what you said I I also have pantry envy my pantry is not even a walk-in pantry um, my pantry is actually quite an awkward space. So, you know, you really can make improvements no matter what your pantry's like. And it doesn't have to, the, you're right about the perfectionism. I sometimes suffer from that as well, where you, oh, I'm not going to do it because it's not going to be perfect, you know. So there's that block there as well. But need to move through that. You will see and feel improvements with just, you know, just making some changes to your pantry. And Again, I've got, you know, mismatched jars and things like that, but it, does, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can definitely, you know, make some changes and, and feel the difference for sure. I love that you say that because I think there is, because we are so, um, I guess, subjected to all of these beautiful images all the time, um, it is hard, you know, for some people because there might be that block to say, well, I'm not going to bother because I do only have this awkward little space or, you know, I can't afford to buy new storage containers or, or whatever the situation might be. But if you do have the awkward little space, you most likely need the organising the most so you can find things properly. Exactly. And make the most of that space that you have. One thing I love is um, for anywhere in the home, but if you can use the inside of your pantry door, if you've got the space, um, you know, some space behind your pantry door when it's closed, using that there is, you know, really valuable space as well. You could put some shelves in there for your herbs and spices or that could be a place where you stick a meal plan or your shopping list or something like that. But just um, think about, you know, what you can use on the inside of that pantry door as well. Even paper towel, like you can buy 
paper towel holders that you can attach in there just to, you know, get some things out of your pantry um, and, and clear your bench some space. space back. Yeah. A lot of us would have yeah. the paper towel on the bench space and yeah. you know, it just comes, it just adds to the clutter. It's necessary. It you know, I, I use it a lot more than we probably should, but you know, I've got a two-year-old and a puppy and yep. you know, we need them. We need, we need it. Absolutely. But you know, it is, it's out on the bench. We attach to the inside of our pantry. It's a wire spice rack and it's got three shelves and it's fantastic because it holds everything. But every time somebody closes the pantry door and it makes that like boom sound, you can hear the, you feel like the spice rack's going to fall off. You can, you can you hear can them just, all rattle together. You can hear them all <laughs> rattling and clunking together. And um, because, yeah, I've got a two-year-old, so she goes looking for food yep. now and she's just become strong enough to open the pantry. So she'll pull it and open. It shut. Yeah, and then slam it shut. Yep, exactly. And then you're like, oh, was that the spices? <laughs> Not the spices. But, yeah, I, I love that. Using that space on the inside of the door. I love the idea of putting the shopping list on the inside there. I think I'm going to try that. I've got mine on the fridge. But, again, that visual clutter of having, you know, an organiser on the fridge and a meal plan and, and you know, what else as well and then adding the shopping list to that might look nice on the inside exactly. of the pantry where I can't yeah, see it all that's the time. Right. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, it's... You might have things on there that you don't want other people reading and that kind of thing. So it's, you know, it's just nice to have it hidden in there and yeah, yeah, just think about what you could use your space for. Absolutely. And, you know, the amount of food that I have found less wasted now that we can see, because I collected cans, maybe I don't know if I should admit this in public. I had cans that I found when I did do my pantry organization that expired in like 2016. Yeah, that's, that is so common. It's, it's actually really funny and I love it. I love to share with people and in our, in my groups and things, you know, what's the most expired product that you've come across. And I was the same. I had tins of tuna in my pantry I know they probably last until the end of time but we don't even eat tuna we're not a tuna family so I'm like what why do I have tins of tuna in the pantry so I think we ended up giving them to the dog I I hope that's okay but um (laughs) you know just thinking about things like that like a real declutter why am I keeping this are we going to become a tuna family? No. So let's get rid of it, you know? <laughs> no, you're right. Why am I keeping this? You know, I did watch years ago. I did the whole Mari Kondo. I tried, does this and does this bring me joy? Does this bring me joy yeah. every time I was trying to? And then some things I was like, well, it might. And I found I'm, I'm very indecisive when it comes to decluttering. My, um, my daughter, when my eldest one, she was about two and you couldn't walk through her bedroom with all these toys. And I just, I really struggled because I was like, oh, but what if she plays with this? Or, you know, oh, but so-and-so bought that when she was a baby or, um, and it took my mother-in-law to come over and she just happened to pop past as I was starting the declutter process. And she, she was like, no, no, you don't need this. Yeah, <laughs> and and yeah. it took someone else to say to me, quick yes or no we're keeping it we're not keeping it all right no you don't need this this is rubbish this is broken you know yeah. um yeah. and after now a few years of doing that I can say particularly with the kids toys and things I am quite decisive um and yes. quite you know good at saying no nope, no nope, we don't need this but yeah when it comes to the clothes yeah. does this bring me joy mm, it might yeah. <laughs> maybe in 12 it months <laughs> when I fit into it like we all know we you know we have that as well we're like our skinny wardrobe and yeah like that and I mean it, it's okay to have things like decluttering and organization isn't about becoming a minimalist and having one one coffee cup and you know three outfits on rotation like there is that happy middle and we just need to find it for ourselves personally, because of course we're all different. Yeah. Um, but going back to your daughters, first of all, your mother-in-law sounds great. I might have to <laughs> her. <laughs> um, but the toys, yeah. Um, decluttering is a bit like building a muscle, I say. Like it does become easier the more and more you do it. And it sounds like, you know, you kind of started to find that decision-making process a little bit easier because really that's what it comes down to is just learning how to make a quick decision 
Um, when I'm decluttering, the few things I think of is, do I love it? Do I use it? Do I need it now? You know? Yeah. Um, and I don't think I've ever regretted getting rid of something. I don't think I've ever, you know, thought, oh gosh, I wish I had that, you know, t-shirt or like whatever it was or ornament or home, you know, home decorating thing. Like once it's gone, there's just that lightness and relief, I think. Um, and yeah, I can honestly say I can't think of anything that I've regretted, you know, letting go of. So it definitely, yeah, it's like building a muscle. Um, it does, does take a bit to get into, but another thing I, it's, it's that whole decision-making process. So if you decide you want to declutter a room or a drawer or a pantry, if you can start in the morning before you've made too many decisions, getting started in the morning, spend 30 minutes in this room, let's go. So I find I, yeah, I do a lot of decluttering and I do a lot of life <laughs> by, by setting the timer on my phone because I just feel it helps you focus more, you move quicker. Um, yeah, that's definitely a little, a little tip as well. Absolutely. Do you know, I actually heard somebody say something similar to that uh, when I was studying and they were talking about using like a kitchen timer um, and it went for 25 minutes and just setting that timer. And when that time is up, yep, that's it. That's what I've achieved. Take a little break, regather your thoughts. And then, yeah, using that timer as your as your expectation of, of um, this is how much time I've got. So, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I need to do that is set a, set a um, timer on my phone for more things because you yeah, think, oh, yeah, I'll works. spend half an hour on this. And then an hour and a half goes by and then you realise that, you know, you haven't really achieved what you wanted to, but you've also not actually allowed yourself those boundaries of your time as well. Yeah. You know, I, as, as one thing just came into my head when you were saying you hadn't regretted anything, you might giggle over this one. <laughs> Before we moved house, I was, when I was pregnant, um, Oh no, I didn't know I was pregnant. So we had a single car garage and it was jam packed with everything we thought we might need one day for another baby. And my daughter was four and a bit. And I had just said to myself, or I said to Jamin, my partner, declutter this garage. <laughs> Because every time I went in there, I tried to use the treadmill and things. And, you know, with the mess around, it just made me feel so uh, mentally cluttered. And anyway, I said, I don't care. You know, I'm going to declutter this garage. You go get a trailer. Let's know we're doing it this weekend. I was really firm about it. And then he's, he's like, the porter cot. You sure you don't want to just keep that or you don't want to give it to someone? And I was like, no, tip. Everything goes. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted yes. it gone. And yes. uh, so we got rid of the porter cot. We got rid of the high chair. We got rid of all of these things. And then the following Tuesday, I found out I was pregnant. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. so, I don't know if I had regrets so much as I was just like, oh, okay, well, that's cost me a little bit of money. That's, <laughs> that's going to cost you a bit. Yeah. Okay. I can see that might cause some regrets, but. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, I'd forgotten about that, that until you said that. I yeah. Thought, yeah. I could yeah. definitely break that one thing. <laughs> but, do you know, it's probably so um, relatable for so many people, um, that feeling of being when you've got physical clutter around you, you know, that you feel really mentally cluttered. Do you like why? Yeah, a cluttered space can definitely affect our mind and it adds to that mental load that we face um, as women. We've got so many things that is on our mind all the time and having that physical clutter, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, it's it's still there and it's a lot for our brain to handle. There, there's studies that show that physical clutter, you know, yeah, adds to that mental load and it just makes processing of anything that much that much more harder so Absolutely. that's what I love about decluttering is creating that yeah clutter-free space which with it um you know reduces that overwhelm and and takes one thing or lots of things off that mental load list yeah so do you know I guess um well, I guess if you think about it when we're taking things in if we have excess clutter around us then we really do have an overstimulation of our visual of our visual senses and our tactile senses. So it'd be really bombarding the mind um, and our senses would be really working overtime for things that aren't really necessarily important. 
Exactly. And I'm, yeah. And I think Jess, you would see that so much in your work, I think. And um, the clutter can create those feelings of irritability as well, overwhelm, anxious feelings. And that, you know, isn't only going on within ourselves, but kids can feel that way as well. Like they, they can become overwhelmed by clutter and, and too many, too many toys. And I know we've all had our kids at multiple times probably say I'm bored or I've got nothing to play with sometimes that comes down to the fact that there's just so much that they they can't see just one thing or focus on one thing to play with because they're just overwhelmed by too much stuff and um and yeah it's the same for all of us no matter what age we are too too much stuff and it's just it's overwhelming absolutely and you know that that constant I guess stress of feeling like this never ends or, you know, that maybe you are carrying the majority of this load in your household as well, the stress and the pressure um, and all of these things, you know, that is going to physically impact your anxiety because your anxiety can be triggered by your stress response. And if you're feeling continually overwhelmed, then, you know, it's actually going to cause a physical response in your body, which is, just crazy to think that a few things on the floor, you know, could overstimulate yeah. you, could make you suddenly feel anxious, could, as you Absolutely. said, feel irritable, um, you know, all of these feelings that I'm sure so many people can relate to, you know, it's, it's such yeah, a and common. Definitely. And more often than not, probably anyone listening to this podcast, Jess, they're probably the, the CEO of the home right so it does feel like a lot because probably you are the one that has to deal with it um you know your partner might not be in on it um it, you think it they see it like, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I, I can don't only think they really, see it I can only really speak from myself in a few conversations I've had with some other women but do you think they see it <laughs> I just don't think they see it I don't think they see it too. <laughs> <laughs> which would be really nice wouldn't it well do you um, know, I but, think um am I allowed to say yeah you know we might be less stressed we might be happier we might be more inclined to you know spend happy time with them if we were feeling less stressed imagine imagine if they saw the clutter and um acted on that right <laughs> That would be lovely. <laughs> but um, in saying that, with the feelings of overwhelm, it can, it can feel like a lot um, and we don't want to be adding on another thing to our to-do list. But freeing, you know, getting that decluttering done and getting that stuff out of your home, you've got less stuff to tidy, you've got less stuff to move around, there's less mess the kids can make because there's less things they've got to throw all around the house. So... Whilst it might take, you know, a bit of time and effort in the beginning, the flow on effect of, you know, how much easier your home life is going to become is definitely, is definitely worth it. So going back to what I said at the beginning, you know, starting small, excuse me, not trying to declutter, you know, like you said, the Marie Kondo, I don't know, I think she might say do it over a weekend or do it all at once (laughs) or whatever. And she She's amazing. I wish I could do that. But, you know, with, with kids at home, it, it can not be reality a, for a lot of us. It's not. Yeah, it's not reality for a lot of people. So taking that pressure off, you know, 20 minutes a day, setting a little reminder on your phone, just doing one drawer a day, one, you know, shelf, just bit by bit. And then it becomes like a habit and you, you don't even really think about it. You're like, yep, that's going that's going into that pile to, you know, take out next week or, or however you do it. But yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the benefits definitely outweigh that, the work. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have heard you say that having a clutter free home is an act of self care. Um, and I completely agree with you on that because there's a feeling, there's a feeling that comes from a clean, no, and when I say clean, I mean, clean to the eye not clutter, not overstimulating. I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about keeping an immaculate home. Me too, Jess. I think I said, I think I mentioned clean before as well. I'm 100% in agreement with you. It's not about having a perfect, clean, magazine-styled house all the time. That is not reality. And my house does not look like that either. We want our homes to feel like a home, to be lived in. We want everyone to feel comfortable and happy and live their life. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not about having 
this magazine worthy worthy home you know it's just yeah. about having less stuff to deal with and making yeah. your life and your home life happier calmer and yeah just having everyone enjoying their time at home I want women and mums to feel happy in their home you know I want it to be everyone deserves their home sanctuary um to be happy to be home when you walk in the door you know not be like oh like feelings of overwhelm and you know anxious anxiety coming at you as you're walking in the door like that's not what a home should be so it's hard enough to um hard enough to switch off between you know walking in from work or walking in from whatever it is that you've been doing um it's hard enough to switch your mind off without you know walking in and then suddenly looking around and going oh okay well I thought I was going to sit down and you know watch watch a show or have a hot drink or something and instead looks like I've got to clean this and you feel like you have to for a lot of well I know I do I feel like I can't go and sit down and work or I can't you know um, go to bed until something's done because I just don't yeah. like the feeling of the stuff being yeah everywhere but yeah where it, where it. and I clutter <laughs> yeah <laughs> well I can help you but you um you yeah can. definitely everyone is like thinking about that future version of yourself like even if it is just you tomorrow morning you know because I know myself I'm like oh once the kids are in bed and like who wants to go and you know clean the kitchen and wash the dishes and everything like it'd be so much easier to sit down on the couch and just veg out but when I'm feeling that way I'm like okay but how do I want to feel tomorrow morning I want to wake up walk out into you know a kitchen that's got clear bench tops is ready to be attacked again <laughs> you know um but I want to feel good in the morning when I wake up I don't want to be dealing with things from the day before and dragging that you know heavy weight into the next day with me so yeah yeah, thinking about the future you um and how you can look after her which yeah I think is a bit you know a bit about that act of self-care absolutely so tell me about your course you have a course that is starting I think next Monday is it the 28th of March and doors open today don't they? Wednesday. Yes, they yeah. do. They open today. Um, so Overwhelmed to Organise, it's my four-week course, which helps bums uh, declutter and organise their home. Um, and it's lots of fun. We have a beautiful community. Um, we share before and after photos. Everyone is really supportive and encouraging of each other. And it's like we were saying earlier about having a community of like-minded, like-minded women, which is what the course is like. You've got everyone with the same goal you know doing the same thing together it's it's a really beautiful space but um we work through the whole home so we cover the kitchen bathrooms bedrooms there's a whole week dedicated to the kids um toys clothes you name it (laughs) Um, we do the laundry the linen cupboard um home office and we're all doing it together so um yeah i've got uh, daily prompts um, of what section of the home we're working on and it's great and there's also no pressure if you miss you know if you miss a day that's okay the weekends are free to catch up if you like or take break whatever uh, you can't fall behind it's just yeah learning those techniques on how to declutter effectively um, and yeah it's it's lots of fun how great though doing that in a community aspect though if like you know you've got that awkward space if everyone's tackling I know the linen cupboard and so you've got this awkward space and you're you know taking your photo going in the community I assume you can do this and saying I've got you know this or this amount of sheets or this amount of space has anyone got any ideas and just absolutely not getting stuck on those areas that you would look at and just go god why do I even start this for (laughs) yeah that's right and it's um we do exactly that and we share I share as well some of my favorite organization products and and things like that even you know like using that inside of the pantry door or a cupboard door to to get things off the floor out of cupboards you know there's lots of little secret tips like that that we share and um and the women really love that so yeah it's great 
if somebody happens to be listening to this after close of doors or, you know, maybe through April or, um, you know, at a different time. So you've got your doors open just so we're very clear on dates. So your doors are open today. So Wednesday, 23rd of March. And when did you say they closed, Sarah? I think I cut you off. Like, that's okay. They close midnight on Friday and then we start the following Monday. So yes. Listening to this, you know, in April or May, um, if they just head to your website, will they find a wait list or something similar? Yep, that's right. Yep, or head to my Instagram page. That's where I hang out the most um, and there'll be a link there to join the wait list. And I run the course a few times a year. So um, you'll be notified when the doors are open again next time. Fantastic. And do you want to just let our listeners know what your Instagram is? Yes, it's at the Styled Pantry. And my website is www.thestylepantry.com.au. Amazing. Thank you. This has been a fantastic conversation and I really, truly appreciate your time and you sharing some little tips with us as well. Thank you, Jess. It's been amazing. Thank you so much for having me on. For everybody listening, go and get that um, decluttering bug because I know it's catchy. We all get it (laughs) when we start imagining what's possible for our spaces and how we want to feel in our homes. So go over and check out Courtney's course because you will not regret it. You've been listening to Inspired Wellness with Jessica. If you loved what you heard today, make sure you subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. If you know someone who would love to hear all about this topic, make sure you share this episode on your socials and tag me at inspiredlife.byjessicaann. You can get in touch with me through my website, www.inspiredlifecollective.com.au. Thank you for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.